Well, welcome everybody to Hillcrest Cafe with uh, Pastor Andrew here. And, and my guests today are Ben Krause, Jacilia, a brontosaurus, and Oscar. There he is. Hey, yeah, Oscar, can you show us your brontosaurus? Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, it's big. Look how big it is. It's as big as his dad. My goodness. Yeah, it's bigger than me. Bigger it's, than him. It's, it's huge. It's a dinosaur. It is. It's a dinosaur. I, I wouldn't want to meet that dinosaur in the woods. Bigger than dinosaur. It's a big dinosaur. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he, he might mistake me for a plant and eat me. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you going to eat him? Yeah. He's going to eat you. Sorry, don't he's going to eat you. <laughs> Dinosaur, have some coffee. It's really good. <laughs> oh, the, I got. We got to tell you this. Yes, we were we were going over to <laughs> to somebody's house, and they asked us, you know, after after you have supper, here's normal custom to ask if you want to have coffee afterwards. I'm like, oh no, yes. we're okay. And Oscar's, no, I want some coffee. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> It's normal in Brazil for kids to drink coffee, so he, he drinks coffee. <laughs> I still remember the first time, I think Emily was like three, three and a half, and we were taking the youth group kids out in the hand sport, and one of them, Cindy Singleton, she gave Emily uh, this, uh, I don't know what it was, like ice. it was an ice cap, and Emily yeah. was like really sleepy, it was nighttime, so she took a little sip, and literally she went, <laughs> like, just like sugar <laughs> caffeine rush, and we're like, uh oh, Cindy, what did you do? <laughs> so cute. Uh, uh, oh my! So it's been quite a journey over the last decade for you. Um, do you mind sharing a bit how you first came in contact with Hillcrest, and then how you met this beautiful woman on your side here, and and where this this handsome young boy came from? Can you share us a little bit of your story about your journeys? Okay. She, she'll probably jump in and correct me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I met Hillcrest obviously through my dad, Don Krebs. So he was pastor there. Ooh, how long ago? That's going to be, you stumped me. About 10 years ago. Over 10, well, yeah. He finished about 10 years ago. So I, yeah, I was. we got there when I was 20. So that's 20 years ago, yeah. And we got we arrived in Hillcrest 20 years ago. Wow, wow, wow. And then uh, I worked I worked there with Hilton for a little bit, and then okay. Hilt, uh, called to do ministry. So that's when I headed off to New York, and but I'd been two, three, almost three years at Hillcrest before I headed down to New York and continued ministry. And so I've always been in contact with Hillcrest, with people there so for, yeah, for 20 years now. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. So was there anybody in particular, obviously Hilton and Lynn had an impact in your life. Was there any, anybody specifically that really stood out to you at Hillcrest as being an encourager or someone who, um, I'm putting you right in the spot here, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always looked up the Gunky. If you can know, if some people know who Gunky is. Yeah. Do you know who Gunky is? I know who Gunky is. Okay. Yeah, right. he's quite a practical joker. He works at the Prime Minister's office, if you didn't know. Really? Yeah, yeah. I get a call every year. I get a call every year. At my birthday. <laughs> we had Al. Al, do it. You know Al, obviously. And then we we worked together doing in the youth department. Yeah. Jacqueline as well. Yeah. A lot of people. I don't know if they're around there anymore or or what, but. And then obviously Sterling and Barb and yeah. Sam, uh, there's a lot of people there that we always oh, looked up. Oh, yeah. Sorry, she didn't know, she wasn't there, so. <laughs> <laughs> so she can't correct you, huh? <laughs> uh, there, there are a lot of people. Roy and Doris Hobson have been great friends of ours, hey. their daughter. And so we've, we've stayed in contact with a lot of them. All right, now, so now i got to list everybody, right? No, okay, we'll just stop there, we'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> then gonna get all, what about me? So there's a lot of people. Cameron's, there are a lot of people. I'm sorry if I missed you. If you're listening and I missed you, there are a lot of people that we really looked up to and respected. Yeah. They'll email me a list later. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's not a help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, sorry, I interrupted. You, were, you, you got down to New York after being at Hillcrest for a few years. Uh, so what, what happened then? 
so I spent in New York, I spent four years. That was great at uh, 9-11. So I actually had only been in New York for three days and then the 9-11 happened. Actually, I was going to go up the towers the night before they fell. But it was raining, so I said, we'll come back another day. And so, and so I ended up being in New York for about four years. We worked in inner city. So I worked with um, a group called Metro Ministries. Um, and then at the end of that time is when I was trying to figure out where where God would have me and what he would want for me. And I'd been to Brazil once just before I got to Hillcrest. Yeah. So that was when I was 19. I went to work with some short, as a short-term mission for six weeks with the Shevel Day Offs, who used to be with the Canadian Baptist Ministries. And so I went with them for six months and I loved it. And so when the time in New York was coming to an end, I said, oh, where should I go? Brazil. So I kind of sold everything I had and bought a ticket and showed up in Brazil. I didn't have a plan or anything, and God really worked some miracles for my oh, life. He would have had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured I was just going to spend a year learning a language, trying to make contacts to actually start ministry, but God had a whole other plan ahead. And through what he worked out, I ended up in Brasilia and I worked on a garbage dump for a bunch of months and then yeah, I was yeah. almost bored because I didn't, <laughs> cause I didn't know Wait. my visa was only for three months and not for one year. <laughs> so you were almost deported. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it lots, it's been a lot of adventures. And then here in Brazil, they have a they have a phrase called jeitinho, uh, which kind of means there's always a way to get around things here. So I say, working with a group, this this group, I figured out that I finally had this problem with my visa. What was I going to do? Yeah. I said, well, I need, you know, I, as a Canadian, said, well, my visa's over. I didn't know it, so I need to leave the country. I said, no, no, no. Well, there's, there's <laughs> always a way around. It says, oh, go down to Paraguay, just cross over the border, spend a day or two there, and then come back and get a new visa. I said, oh, okay, let's do it. So I go down to Paraguay, and I go to go to federal police and say, all right, I'm leaving the country. I'm going over to Uruguay. So they give me a stamp saying I left Brazil. And so I go over to get into Paraguay. I said, no, you can't come in here. What? Why not? Uh, you don't have a visa. <laughs> I said, uh, uh, no, because I left Brazil and I can't go into Paraguay. So what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so at the end of it, I went back to the federal police and they, they did their Zichinho. They found a way and they gave me a, a, a bunch of months extension and then I was able to leave the right way. <laughs> and I didn't get a deport. So it all worked out. Fantastic. Yeah. So from there, then I came back to Canada for just a couple of years while I was trying to get an actual missions group. That's where I found Action International. That's where, right. I, where I got together and all that together. And then I came back to Brazil, and that's where I met this woman. Woo! -hoo! So thank you, Lord. That's, that's where the story gets good. <laughs> so from there, I came to Brazil, uh, but I didn't come. I wasn't able to go back to to Brazil because uh, the Action International didn't have any work in Brazil. They only had it in São Paulo. Right, right. So right. I came back, and I worked in a kind of like a youth. How would you call that? I don't, it's, it's an orphanage, but for, so it'd be like kids, older kids that don't have families. Yeah. So let's go to Juicelia for a second. I'll put you on the spot. This blonde haired, blue eyed Canadian uh, guy walks in the church. Is this, what, what happens? Does he catch your eye? Does he stumble and fall and you have to put a bandaid on his knee? What, what was the connection there for you two? How'd that, uh, what happened? I'm just going to jump in there. She'll give you her version, and then I'll tell you the right version, okay? So, we met um, on, on Saturday night, but mm -hmm. we don't talk. Just, I just saw uh, Ben on the door. For many years, uh, another pastor, Canadian pastor, uh, bring people to to work there for some weeks, and, but he was not there. Yeah. So I thought, what are these guys doing here? <laughs> 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 not foreign. 
came anymore. So we have to go and uh, it's take some time because he's a little bit lazy. <laughs> <laughs> But um, uh, what's a how to say like a, a, a romantic story? How can we start to know each other? And at some point, we start the, the ministry around the uh, very close to the church. Yeah. And, and something happened. Very, very, very easily, very, not easily, but naturally, um, uh, naturally yeah. Yeah, naturally. We, we had some difficulties about the language, but, sure. uh, but he was, he, he spoke very well at those times. Yeah, yeah, after about four years of learning. Hopefully. <laughs> 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 She corrects me all the time now, so. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of a happy marriage. <laughs> yeah, that's how we met. I will say that's pretty close to how we met. Yeah. Pretty no, close. No? no, it was in the church. No. No. I won't Are you sure? <laughs> There were these angels that came down, a bright light shone down on Juscelia, and, and Ben knew right away. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's very, he's very, almost like this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so you end up in uh, Brazil, but you're not able to work in Brazil, so you have to go to um, uh, San Paulo. Is that what you said it was? Yeah. yeah. That's where you came? And, Go ahead. So, <laughs> there must be a delay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So, uh, after, so what kind of transpires next? You fall in love, and then you start doing ministry some more. Uh, where, where does that lead you to, ministry wise? So we started uh, in Heliopolis, which is a slum there in in uh, São Paulo. That's where the church was. That's where I met her. And so we started with the church that we're in, the, the Baptist church. Yes. Uh, found that they really didn't really have a heart for doing God's, preaching the gospel to the lost. They were yep. more kind of involved in taking care of their own church. And so yep. we felt that very quickly after about a year. We found that the ministry wasn't going forward. They didn't really have any interest in it. Yeah. And so from there we... We were just out there doing the ministry once, and there was a pastor that stopped and listened to the whole program. And afterwards, he said, oh, you need to come to our church and talk to us. And they were more of a out for preaching the gospel and going yes. to the church. As soon as we got one, walked in the door, we knew that's where we were supposed to be. Awesome. And so then we, we moved over to that church, and we had their church... For at the beginning, open their doors wide open for us. And so we were able to form a team of about 20, 25 people. Yeah. <laughs> he's getting full of it now. <laughs> That's, he's like, there's a camera. Ooh. Time to make a party. <laughs> so, yeah. So from there, we went to this church, and that's where we started the ministry, the outreach to, to the slum. So we yeah. started in the church, and then we moved to the street, and then we moved to it'd be kind of like what... Uh, the states, the projects, where it's yeah. government funding houses, and it, it's still kind of like the slum, but not, but nicer buildings and stuff. So we ended yeah. up moving to there, and we moved to, uh, it's called Invasões, which is, um, it's like uh, people that don't have a home, and they don't want to live in a slum, and they found abandoned buildings, and so they just kind of broke in, right. and they started it. So we, we ended up doing inside the slum, in the government projects, and then in the invasions. So that's where our ministry in, the, in Sao Paulo uh, was, was too. So that was for eight, nine years we worked there. Yeah. So what were some of the your highlight moments. I mean, you spent almost a decade doing it. I mean, 
That's a long time. I'm sure there's lots of different things you could share, but what are some of the your top moments where you just like, yeah, this is this was like, uh, I'll never forget this moment. I was trying to, I was trying to think of that. What what would be the moment? What if kind of figured out? Because there, there's different kind of ones. There's the ones where sure. like we uh, we do the project and we preach the gospel, and then there'd be there'd be a kid like Jonathan. He was like uh, he's 11 years old or something when we met him, and he'd come every week. And then remember when he preached the gospel, and we'd have an altar car at the end, and yeah. he came up and he prayed with one of the one of the chiefs, one of the, the helpers there, and awesome. he accepted Christ. And like lots of kids do it. Like if you if you make a, a an invitation for kids, you always get kids that come up. But he was different in the fact that once he accepted Christ, he came to church all the time. Yeah. And he got and still to this day, like almost ten years later, he's in the church, he's working, he's faithful, and he's and he, he's committed. Like those are the ones that you because lots of kids you don't know. Kids like might sure. not go up to the accept Jesus just because you're there and they're like you. And they want to make you happy, but then yeah. you get those kids really were touched by it. Sure. So we have like uh, in the projects, we go up and she accepted Jesus at at the at our outreach, but then she go home and tell her mom all that she every week she tell her mom what she learned at from Egan, which is our outreach program. Wow. And then she we visit, and when we went and visit, she called us and said, "I want to talk to you." She says, she talks to me all the time what you're learning, and I want to know a little bit more. And so we were able to share the gospel with her. And awesome. she came to, and her and her daughter went to church, and they got baptized, and they're faithful in the church. Like, those are the kind of things that, you know, that are the, the biggest story, right? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. Then, then there's ones that are not so, they're not as big. They're not somebody that's accepted Jesus, but they'd be, we're just at the right we were there at the right moment. It would be like uh, one of the kids that we we go up and we do visitation. So we go and visit the kids. And one, there's a little boy, and we were sitting there talking to him. And the little boy would say, "They asked, we got talking about the family." And yeah. so the little boy, said, "What? How, which, where's your dad?" So all oh, the police took him away. He had something in his pocket, which would be drugs, and they took yeah. him away. Like and they hold, he held held his hands like he was handcuffed. And they, and they said, oh, oh, mother. And she said, oh, my mom, she spends all her time dancing at the bar. And so and she, then we got talking to him. And said, how are you? How are you doing? He says, and this little boy said, one of these days, I'm going to walk up to the top of the building. And I'm going to jump off. Uh, four years old. Four so, years old. Oscar's age. And at that moment, we were just there at the right time. We got to sit and we got to pray with him. We prayed against that that feeling, against that urge that God would have his hand on that family. It's just being, you just never know when somebody's at their lowest point. My goodness. And it could be, it could be a, an adult, it could be a teenager. And it's it's those moments that you don't plan, that you can't see coming. Yeah. That God just put there for, for such a time as this. Like yeah, the, yeah. We'd have, we'd have kids like that would come up every once in a while. You just, they're not a kid that got saved. They didn't come and accept Jesus. But God put you in that kid's life for just, they needed you in just that moment. Yeah. And I think those are just as important because I really truly believe that our biggest contribution to the kingdom of God isn't children that have got saved. But we help create an image of who God is. Yeah, that God that's right. Laid whether it be, when they think, well, God's good. Maybe if the, the only thing they learn with us is that God is good. If a kid accepts that, most of what we believe today, like me as an adult and you as an adult, are things that we accepted when we were kids. So yeah. maybe a kid leaves our project just believing, ah, God's good, or church is fun, or something like that. I yeah. believe once that kid accepts that as truth, it's impossible. The devil cannot take that away, and God uses yeah. it later in life. It's that though, yeah, exactly. We look at times as those as just as important. Though it's not a kid saved, it's still something I believe that God called us to to play oh, a part absolutely. in. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, like uh, as a church, we've been praying for you for years. We we believe in you and your family, and 
we don't ever think that any time was wasted. Uh, we think that what you're doing, you're preaching, like, was God's word never returns to him void. So, I mean, you're spreading the word, you're speaking the word, um, but when seeds are planted, pl the seeds can plant and grow all by themselves. So you've planted the seed faithfully for 10 seasons, right? And, or longer. And there will be, when you get to heaven, you'll find out what the what the results were and you know because because you're into a new a new season a new journey coming up uh in the next little while would you mind sharing because we want to continue like you're one of ours now so like you can't get rid of us we're going to be praying for you no matter what you're doing and uh you guys are precious to us so what's this new season this new step forward look like for you well uh we kind of kind of figured out at the end of our time in san paulo that I was kind of getting burned out. Um, I found, uh, I think the best way I can describe it is like, for all the good stories you get, you get, we get a whole lot more bad stories. Yeah. We, we, we've really seen some things that are the worst things people can do to each other. And especially in these slums, I don't know how to really describe like the same stuff that happens here happens in Canada. I just, I just think that here is an exaggeration. I think yeah. it's the best. Thing. Like it's, it's like, I don't know. Like here, <laughs> like it, just for an example, like in politics, there's corruption in Canada, and there's bribes and all that kind of stuff that happen, I believe. But in Brazil, like you're talking bribes that are like a billion dollars, like or like hundreds of millions of dollars. Like it's not like yeah. just like, oh, I'll give you a ten thousand dollars here. It's hundreds of millions. Yeah. And the, the corruption is just an exaggeration of something that I think takes place in everywhere, right? Yeah. And so Brazil just seems to be that in general. Like you take a situation, it's just that situation, but amplified to 10, 20, 30 times. Yeah. So we found that, I found, and I, it's just been released in the last couple of years, that I found that even when we're working here in Rio, that you'd hear these stories. But before, when I'd hear these stories, I get, it, I don't know, I guess the phrase that we'd use is break your heart, right? It yeah. moves you, you feel for the, that situation. But what I kind of came to kind of realize is that my heart wasn't moved by them anymore. Yeah. As, yeah. As, like kind of what I put in my in our newsletter that, that the pastor once in New York said the danger of working in difficult places is that you can become like those places yeah. hard, and that's what I found at came. Now I think now when I hear a difficult story, I try to figure out well, is this person trying to get something from us because you're using a sad story and trying yeah. to get something for us, or they're yeah. going to do this or that. And so instead of my heart being broken and moved towards this, now it became hard. That verse, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, if I have the gift of prophecy and fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I give everything I own, even die as a martyr, if I don't love, then it's meaningless. Yeah. I think I think for me that that was the, the nail in the coffin, I guess. Yeah. My heart doesn't move anymore. And it if what we do is not done out of love, then it's then it's not shouldn't be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had someone uh, share with me. Uh, she's I, I call her our little prophetess. She she kind of goes from church to church. Her name's Catherine. She's really in tune with God's spirit, and God has been very clear with her, saying He's going to stop people in their tracks. He's going to stop the church from doing things that are not being done out of love. And uh, to me, you're you're just in sync with God uh, to be self aware of what's happening. Um, you know, Elijah, same thing happened to him, right? Like, uh, he just got to point, and, and it's interesting what God's uh, cure was. It was eat, sleep, eat, sleep, eat, sleep, <laughs> right? Now we'll talk. And so, you know, getting out of the situation, and he got out of the situation, right? He went and just took some time, and, and you know, God is the, he's the redeemer, he's the restorer. Um, I'll send you a link later. A link later, sorry, Michael Linkletter, friend. Uh, I'm going to send you a link later uh, from Dr. John Bartol. He was a uh, he's one of our convention pastors, and and he actually suffered total burnout. 
but it's only about a two or three minute video. It's very powerful. It's very helpful. Uh, I've, I've, in my time in ministry, I've, there's been times where I've really teetered on the edge of burnout and I've had to make adjustments and such. So um, you, you're not alone. Uh, I'm in a very healthy space right now, I'd say. Um, but you're being very wise, right? And of course, th the devil would come alongside and say, oh, you're a quitter, you're a this or that, or right? But that's that's not true. So I just, if, if the enemy spoke any of those kind of lies over you, we just rebuke those lies and say, praise God for your wisdom. Uh, praise God for hearing him and recognizing and being sensitive to him because you are absolutely correct. God wants us, our our lives to be motivated by love and joy and and sometimes it's part of the sign of god to move us on to a new role or a new season is okay well if i don't have vision i don't have passion i don't have um joy like i used to okay well that season's finished so then you start exploring what's next and and be free you know like um you have been faithful in a difficult position for a decade you know What's the average lifespan for pastors in North America? Two years, <laughs> right? So uh, maybe that's youth pastors. I'm not sure, but it's pretty low compared to you know, ten years in like uh, dealing with uh, the things you've been dealing with. So uh, I, I think one thing uh, I've heard uh, a special speaker once say was, "God loves the worker more than the work." You know, and you're more important. I'm not saying that. Uh, well, yeah, I, I do. I think your your health and your mental health and your uh, emotional health, uh, you have a young family. I, I think that's very important. And I, I'm very proud of you for uh, recognizing and seeing the signs. And look at that healthy young boy you got. And, uh, you know, he's got his dad and he's got his mom. And uh, the adventures are just beginning. So what's, what's, what's next? What's next? What's, uh, what's God been leading you towards? Well, so since since we kind of came into that realization of burnout and we needed to get out, we just kind of put feelers out there to find out which God, which door God would open for us. So if God wanted us in ministry, that's fine. If you wanted us to come back to Canada, that's fine. If you wanted me to work a regular job, that's fine. Whatever he wanted was okay with us. We just wanted to do what he wanted us to do. And so one of those options that we put put my name out there was to the Canadian forces yeah my dad in, was my dad was a in the army before he was a pastor yeah. so I'd always quite it always appealed to me the Canadian forces so I just yeah. put it out there I thought well I'm I'm go, I'm uh, 40 years old now so I thought you know what's the chances you know but I might as well try because it's a good you know good career you know take care I can take care of my family I can take care of all the stuff and I quite enjoy the work so I put it out, and of all the stuff that we, of all the putting our name out there, the one that came back was the Canadian Force just uh, the end of last month. So we figured, well, if this is the door God opens for. It's the only one He opens. So <laughs> this is the one we've got to go through. Yeah. So, and and sometimes God, you know, this may even. I'm not saying that God's not calling you to the Canadian Forces, but it just might be the way He gets you back into Canada. <laughs> possibly. Possibly. We're, yeah. we're open to whatever God, whatever God would have for us, yeah. and whatever time He had. Maybe we needed time to rest, and then we'll do something else. And yeah, maybe and we'll do all, work. With, who knows? With right? all the with all the dinosaurs around, maybe if it considered uh, Christian know, archaeology, we, we, could, we could open a Jurassic Park. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's where we're going. They called us at the end of last month to say they offered us a job. We only had a few days to either accept or, or not, so we accepted. Yeah. And that's yeah. when we had to put in our notice with the action, and that's when we sent our newsletter and stuff. Yeah. And so the well. idea was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so actually, my train is supposed to start in the beginning of April. Okay. So we put our, our notice into action. So we're done the end of March, and we're supposed to start, and supposed to be in Quebec or Toronto first yeah. at the yeah. beginning of April. But now with the coronavirus, I don't know what's going to happen. If they're going to cancel it or something, so we could use prayer because I kind of left action and yeah, haven't yeah. started. Yet. <laughs> Time to rest. Right? Time to rest. So, are we allowed to ask you what kind of role you're taking in the military? Are you going to be a grunt? Are you going to be an officer? Are you going to be uh, what? What? Or, or just communicate? I don't know. Are you allowed to say? Oh well, yeah. Sure. 
Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just going to be a regular old grunt. Nice. That's the most yeah. thing that, to be honest, that's the one that most appealed to me. It's always most appealed to me, I guess, because of the influence of my dad, because he was a grunt, grunt too. Yeah, he was an became, officer. I was going to say, he became a captain at the end, didn't he? Yeah, he, he was an officer at the beginning. So oh, at the beginning. He was, he was an uppity soldier. So <laughs> I'll just be a regular old soldier, because I, to be honest, I didn't have many options. I, was, I don't have any university. So I had uh, I had to go take that, and I could train to be something, but the pay is not enough that I can support my family on on learning and working. So yeah. for at least for the beginning, I'm just going to be a regular old grunt. Yeah, well, you know, I, when I was at Acadia, we had several guys uh, that were actually probably older than you are now, and uh, the military had actually paid them to get their university and their master's divinity, so that they could become military chaplains. Um, so you, you never know what will happen down the road, but because he was faithful in the military, they're like, all right, well, because you're faithful in the military and uh, you've got experience in the mission field, uh, or I think this, yeah, so this guy got his BA and then got his, uh, the, they actually paid for his MDiv and it was a pretty good gig and he's still working there now. So yeah, I'm just throwing those possibilities out because you never know. <laughs> Yeah, but he, no, he's trying to kiss me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Kissing his parents. So, so I'm just going to leave it open for a minute. I don't know if there's anything you guys wanted to add, if there's anything you'd like to share or say. or um, And we after that... Well, absolutely, that? we want to thank you and Hillcrest Baptist for all... Oscar. <laughs> hey, God, I'm talking here. Hey, God, I'm talking here. <laughs> Uh, we just wanted to thank you and the church for all the years of support that you guys have given us. We couldn't have been on the field for as long as we've made it without you guys. And we really appreciate all you've done for us. Not just the financial support, but the prayers and the, the emails, the letters, the open homes that we've had, the open, open doors we've had. You guys have been a great support to us. We really appreciate all you've done for us. We hope that God will open the door that we'll be able to do this personally. We'll be able to come to the church and say hello and go to the homes and thank you personally. For now, it's going to have to be through telephone or oh, yeah. Skype, but yeah. we hope we can do it in person because we yeah. really appreciate all you've done for us. Yeah. Well, would you guys mind praying uh, just for the church, for Hillcrest, for our people? Um, and just, I don't, hey, Oscar, we're going to ask your dad to pray. Do you want to pray for our church too? We've been praying for you since before you were born. Did you want to pray for us? And then maybe your dad will pray for us too? Sure, let's do this. I'm going to close my eyes and I got my hands folded and I'm ready for whenever you are. Oh, he did. He just prayed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just... Can you pray again? So he's praying in Portuguese. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, God, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far as he, he's getting there, little by little. Sometimes yeah. at night we can do more, but. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to pray for you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Please. Uh, Jesus, today we just want to come before you in your presence. God, we want to thank you so much for all the good things you've done for us, for Hillcrest Baptist, for all the people there, for all the members. God, we just want to lift up to you and thank you so much for their faithfulness and their kindness to us as missionaries here in the field. God, bless Hillcrest Baptist. Bless them with everything that they need. God, fill their, their ranks with the right people, people that are full of love and mercy and compassion for those who need it the most. God, I pray that you'd fill them with fire for your gospel, that, God, the only thing that transforms is your word. May those that don't know it or those that have rejected it, may their word, may Hillcrest Baptist be known for a place that preaches your word, preaches the truth, that, God, we are desperate and we are in need of you. And without you, we are lost and going to hell. But God, with you, we are saved. We are brought from the from the brink, and we can 
enjoy your presence and we can bask in your graciousness. God, I just pray that your hand would be upon the people of that church. God, protect them right now during this coronavirus problem. God, God that it would not touch any of their members. We think especially of the older ones or those that are sick or, or have problems. God, protect them with your supernatural power. Yes, Send your angels around them and protect them, God. And may, God, this sickness be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. And that God, after this is gone, which it will go, that God, your presence would descend upon Hillcrest Baptist, that God had become a light in the midst of the west side, that God, your hand would be upon them. Bless the people that are there in ministry. Bless the members. And God, I pray that your hand would be upon Pastor Andrew and his wife and his family. God, fill them with your spirit, fill them with your presence, fill them with your word and your truth. And God, may it be spoken with your authority and your love. God, we just pray that your hand would be upon this church. Bless it for all their kindness, for all their faithfulness, and all the good things that they have been doing for your kingdom. God, I pray that one day, each one, each one of us will see the fruits of our labors. Maybe not here on this earth, but we will see it one day in heaven. God, I just pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. So, so how hot is it there right now? Quite cool. It's only about 30, 32-ish. It's actually that, quite cool. Is that 32 Celsius? 32 Celsius, yeah. Oh, quite cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. <laughs> It normally gets about like 37, 38 is the normal, normal days, is the normal day here. So okay, today's quite cool. Oh, wow. So I'll, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. I got a okay, nice little monkey in your back, I see. He's just, uh, yeah, I got George on the back. Then there's little George. There's George. <laughs> it's so good to see you guys. Oh, it's great to see you too. Yeah, we'll continue to pray for you as, as you come to these next steps, these next journeys. Uh, and if you ever need specific prayer, just email me and we'll set the church on fire to pray for you. So we really appreciate it. And we hope yeah. soon we can be able to come and see you guys in person. I uh, would love it. We'd love it. OK, it great to talk to you. Pleasure. You guys have a great day. See you, Oscar. You see you, Cecilia. Bye. <laughs> Good to see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> It's my monkey. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you later. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.